Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today. I mentioned in yesterday's video at the very beginning, regarding the Champions League being back, and yes, we finally got our nice piece of European football back on our TV screens, and what went down, oh my goodness, Barcelona in their own backyard getting wrecked by Mr Mbappe. Who would have thought it? I mean, well, some may have thought it, but I never would have said that PSG would would win 4-1 at the new Camp, especially without Neymar. I think if Neymar was there yesterday, there could have been a massacre. And it's unbelievable the result that Barcelona at home have inflicted on themselves. They look nothing like they used to. Barcelona and you could say UEFA Lona, that's long gone. Long gone. Finito. Done. Finished. Dead and buried. Final nail in the coffin. Barcelona are finished or well they look it anyway we'll see if the comeback is on in Paris but I very much doubt it I think PSG are gonna have a cakewalk against Barcelona at the Parc de Prince but we will see what happens tonight we got more Champions League football congratulations to Liverpool as well who would have thought that they would win 2-0 away at Leipzig no one would have thought that especially in the form that they're in but I have to say Leipzig you lot were defending like Tottenham. I mean, it, hor horrific, horrific defending. So we might have dodged a bullet with Apamakano. A lot of few of you are saying, yeah, let's get Apamakano. Well, yesterday, not just him, but the entire back line, absolute shambles. And talking about back lines, talking about central defenders, that's the topic of today's video. So before I get into all of that, I'm going to ask you guys, if you are new, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. And let's get into today's nitty gritty. So, how central defender situation that we have at Chelsea Football Club at the moment. At the moment it seems okay, especially with Thiago Silva as part of our back line and even at 36 years old he is absolutely killing it and there's no doubt about that. Thiago Silva is playing like he's 25. It's, it's ridiculous frankly but uh, I'll take it all day long. There's obviously rumour that his contract is going to get extended by one more season. So he will be at Chelsea next season. And I think that's going to be it. But we need to prepare. We need to try and see what are we going to do? Who are we going to bring in in order to fill the void that Thiago Silva leaves? Because right now, let's face it. Yes, it's not you know, the worst defence in the world. We do have central defenders in the team, but, you know, we could up the standard a little bit. We could go to the next level. And if Thiago Silva steps out of the way and retires or whatever he's going to choose to do after Chelsea Football Club, I think it's wise that we bring someone in. Or at least look at Tomori and see if that deal is still possible in terms of bringing him back and not having the option to buy, frankly, an AC Milan score, which, to be honest, it is. But let's hope they don't trigger it. Well, it looks like we've started to lay the foundation to try and make something happen. And we've got none other than a certain agent who is back on the case. Now, if you remember before we got Timo Werner and before we got Kai Havertz, there was one certain Chelsea man that got in touch with both of them and played a part in bringing both of them to Chelsea Football Club. Now, that man is none other than agent Tony Rudiger. Well, Tony Rudiger is back at it again. Yes, he has put back the suit and tie. He is back into the boardroom and he's back as an agent. And here is the latest in terms of his latest mission. Tony Rudiger, what have you been up to? This is from Christian Fork. True, Agent Rudy is on a new mission. Alaba? Boateng? Sule? Tony Rudiger, if Chelsea were to decide on one of the three players as a transfer target... I would be available to answer any questions. I know Jerome and Niklas very well, and I've already had contact with David Alaba. Tony Rudiger back on the case. It's as simple as that. Honestly, I truly believe yeah, at this point, even though he might be setting himself up for failure, if Rudiger manages to convince one of these lads to come to Chelsea, that could be his position in jeopardy. That could be him putting himself on the bench, you know, so <laughs> it's quite a sacrifice, but it would be a very good one if I'm being completely honest, because those targets are good targets. Now, there's complications in terms of are they attainable? Can we actually get any of those free? I'm going to get into the detail very shortly, but Tony Rudiger doing this 
Well, you know, he frankly, he's pretty much made it certain that after his career at Chelsea as a player, I think he's got a position in the boardroom ready. Do expect Tony Rudiger to end up with a new position in the boardroom alongside Marina Granovskaya tempting all the Germans to come to Chelsea. I think that is what's going to happen at this rate. It's very weird and it's very interesting. It's quite laughable. It's, it's something quite fun to look at when you do look at it in detail because it's it's weird. He, he did help in bringing Werner to Chelsea. He did help in bringing Havertz to Chelsea. He's already made contact with David Alaba and he's also keeping an eye on Jerome Boateng and Niklas Sula. So it's, uh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Well, if we look at those three options, let's, you know, put Rudiger to the side and tell him, thank you very much. You are free to go and have a break. Go and get yourself a cup of tea and some Jaffa cakes whilst we look at your work so far. Yeah. So Rudiger, go to the cafeteria. Uh, I'll see you in a sec. Enjoy your snack. But let's look at the three names that Tony Rudiger has sounded out when talking to Christian Falk. He has sounded out Jerome Boateng. Now, Boateng um, is in a bit of a situation at the moment. At the moment, it's a little bit difficult for him. Just to let you know, all three of these are Bayern Munich players. So that is something to keep an eye on, and I'll get to that shortly. But Boateng currently is in a situation where, unfortunately, his ex-girlfriend has passed away. I th it's, it's, it's believed, it's believed that she committed suicide. She was found dead in her apartment. And when Bayern Munich were out at the Club World Cup, which they did win, um, Boateng had to leave early for cited personal reasons. And it was obvious it was in regards to his, his girlfriend that was found dead. So he's got a lot on his plate. That is something quite tragic and quite unbelievable to be honest this was a week after they broke up as well which I'm sure has put Boateng's head in a complete mess um, but in terms of the footballer Boateng as a, as a player 32 years old is he past his peak is he past his prime he is still playing he is still playing well but at 32 years old is it wise to bring someone like that to Chelsea to replace an old central defender in Thiago Silva. So we're saying goodbye to who is going to be 37, Thiago Silva, once he does leave Chelsea Football Club, and we're bringing in a 32-year-old central defender to replace him. I think it's a little bit, you know, it's not the wisest decision to make. we got to be looking at someone slightly younger. we got to be looking at someone fresher and someone that can stay in our back line and build something for the next few years. That would be ideal. So in that aspect, Boateng, I would personally say not my first choice, but let's see what happens. In terms of option number two, Nicholas Sula. Sula is 25 years old. Now, bearing in mind, he is a lot younger than Boateng and just a bit younger than David Alaba, who I'm going to get to. But Sula isn't the most frequent centre-back in the Bayern Munich team. He's in and out. Play sometimes, on the bench sometimes. Play sometimes, on the bench sometimes. Now that, to be honest, is not much of a concern. German international is of a good standard, is at Bayern Munich as well. He knows what he's doing. Now, is he a central defender that I feel we can bring to Chelsea? I think it would be a central defender that we can definitely get. I don't think it would be very difficult to get Sula. And I'll tell you why. You've got to understand, Bayern Munich have just signed the Pamacano. If David Alaba does leave and Apamakano is on his way, then frankly, I still think Sula is going to be third choice, if you know what I mean. Someone that's not going to be in that back line frequently. Not as much as Apamakano, who I think will be called upon. Maybe not as much as even Boateng for the next couple of years at least. So that is a player where you look at and you think... Maybe we can get him. And at 25 years old, that could be a very good investment. Option number three, which is the prime option, the option on everyone's mind, is David Alaba. David Alaba is confirmed to be leaving Bayern Munich. He has confirmed that. But to where? And that's the question mark. At the moment, no one knows. Maybe he doesn't even know yet. But the options are Real Madrid in pole position, and they're in pole position because of his ridiculous wage demand, which is the one turnoff in regards to David Alaba. I'd have David Alaba tomorrow. 28 years old, flexible, versatile, good centre-back, good left-back. Can fit in exactly where we want him to, in a back four or a back three. He would be more than suited to come in and play, and at 28 has a lot left in the tank. So, for free, that would be deal of the decade, I would honestly try and say. Is that stretching it a bit too much, deal of the decade? I don't know. But a 28-year-old David Alaba still at his peak for free and fits right in 
I think that would be amazing. But the only turn off, as I said, is that apparently he wants £400,000 a week. £400,000 a week is eh, unreal. Now, as I've said before, if Chelsea Football Club are able to afford that and it doesn't cause you know, disharmony in the camp because other players will look at it and maybe go, oi, you know, who's this fella coming in with 400 grand? Hey, I want an increase. If that's not the case and Chelsea players are all very understanding and Chelsea can afford it, then cool. I'm not going to say no. But if that is not going to be the case, then it's probably wise that we don't get David Alaba. So right now, who does Agent Rudy try to, you know, pursue? Does he try and stick with David Alaba? Do you think David Alaba would be the best option? Obviously, as I've said right now, Real Madrid are in pole position and we are going to be second choice, but it's not impossible. It's not impossible. And especially with an agent Rudiger on a mission, you never know. He might just turn David Alaba's head toward London rather than Madrid. It's a possibility. So should we go in for David Alaba and actually try and get him or... Do you see either Jerome Boateng or Nicolas Sula as a fit centre-back to come into Chelsea Football Club instead of David Alaba? As I've said, if Thiago Silva does depart, which he will at some point, we need to get someone in. The other option to consider is, if it was up to you, and let me know in the comments, would you not take any of them and say, I want Tomori, get us Tomori back now? And if that's a possibility, would you prefer to get Tomori or would you rather get Jerome Boateng or Nicolas Sula or David Alaba if that's a possibility? But to be honest, if you're asking me, I don't think David Alaba will be coming to Chelsea. I think his eyes are set on Real Madrid. I think they have no problem paying that wage of 400 grand a week. I think for Real Madrid, it would be not a problem. And um, they'll just go ahead with it and give him what he wants. It's just the way Real Madrid works, isn't it? It's just the way they do things. And, you know, they don't necessarily think about the, the squad and the team and, you know, what the players might think. They just want to get the best players all the time and just make something work. That's just the way Real Madrid have always functioned. And it's not going to change now. So, so in my eyes, I think the realistic options would be Boateng, Sula or none of them and try and get Tomori back at the end of the season, no matter what it costs. We'll see what happens. But let me know in the comments what you think would be the best option. Agent Rudiger, thank you so much. Back to work. Good luck on your mission. And we'll see what you pull off. I hope you bring back results, Agent Rudy. I hope you bring back results. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'd love to hear them. Hit the subscribe button if you are new. Hit that notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. And I'll see you tomorrow for a brand new video. Let's see what's in store for the Champions League tonight. We got Porto versus Juventus. Cristiano Ronaldo back into the fold. I'm sure he's going to be looking to do better than Lionel Messi did yesterday. That's for sure. And we'll see Sevilla and Borussia Dortmund. Keep an eye on Erling Haaland. We'll see if he can in a couple of goals. Anyway, I'll see all of you tomorrow for a brand new video. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a good one. Look after yourselves. Take care and peace.